Air Force One, the official aircraft of the President of the United States, is a symbol of power and presidential prestige. Russia refers to its presidential aircraft as the Flying Kremlin, while America has called theirs the Flying White House for several decades. The reason is straightforward. Even when the president is on board, the United States can still be operated effectively. This is because Air Force One is equipped with sophisticated communication systems, enhanced security features, and luxurious accommodations. As a plane tasked with transporting the president, Air Force One must always keep up with technology. Over the years, the presidential aircraft has evolved significantly in terms of technology, size, and capabilities. Technically, the term Air Force One applies to any Air Force aircraft carrying the president. Air Force One is the radio call sign used by air traffic controllers to distinguish the presidential aircraft from other commercial planes. Essentially, any Air Force plane boarded by the president is referred to as Air Force One. However, Air Force One eventually became specifically associated with the aircraft used by the President of the United States. Although it's called One, the U.S. military has two aircraft designated for presidential travel. Historically, the presidential aircraft has undergone several changes in the model. Initially, it was the C-54 Skymaster, a military transport aircraft. The presidential fleet then shifted to the jet-powered VC-137C during the 1960s, based on the Boeing 707. These aircraft offered better speed and range. It was only in the 1990s that the VC-25A began operating as Air Force One. The VC-25A is based on the modified body of the Boeing 747-200B and has served as presidential transportation for three decades. The Boeing 747-200B aircraft has become the new standard for presidential travel, equipped with advanced communication systems, enhanced security features, and luxurious accommodations. The concept of an aircraft specifically for the president's use originated in the early 1940s during World War II. At that time, President Franklin D. Roosevelt became the first U.S. president to travel by aircraft. The Boeing VC-25, based on the Boeing 747, is a military version that has been modified for presidential transport and is operated by the United States Air Force. The U.S. has two such aircraft, known as VC-25A, with tail numbers 28000 and 29000. Technically, the designation Air Force One is only used when the President is aboard one of these aircraft. What distinguishes the VC-25 from other Boeing 747 passenger planes? This aircraft includes a self-contained baggage loader and can refuel mid-flight. The VC-25 is powered by four General Electric CF-680C-2B1 turbofan engines. As it carries a lighter load than commercial Boeing 747-200S, its range is extended and it can fly at higher speeds. Other differences lie in the number of passengers and crew it can carry, along with state-of-the-art navigation, electronic, and communication equipment. In terms of design and configuration, the VC-25 can travel as far as 7,800 miles or approximately 12,600 kilometers, which is roughly equivalent to one-third of the Earth's circumference, without needing to refuel. The VC-25A is technically capable of accommodating more than 70 passengers. Another aspect worthy of discussion is the operational cost of each VC-25A belonging to the United States. 
According to reports from the Air Force, the operational cost for each VC-25A is in the vicinity of $240,825 per hour. When compared to commercial aircraft, which cost between $1,500 and $9,000 per hour depending on the type of aircraft, its age and fuel expenses, the operational cost difference between the VC-25A and commercial planes is staggering, being many times higher. The aircraft can be considered the safest in the world. To maintain its security, most of the defense technology used in Air Force One is classified. However, it is known that Air Force One is equipped with defense systems and is managed by highly trained security personnel to ensure the safety and integrity of Air Force One. For security and logistical reasons, both planes are flown simultaneously when making visits. Air Force One operates under strict security protocols to protect the President and the aircraft. The first protocol involves thorough inspections of all involved personnel, including security checks for passengers and their belongings. The aircraft is equipped with technology that shields it from electromagnetic pulses to disrupt enemy radar. It has systems to divert heat-seeking missiles and is also equipped with secure and sophisticated communication equipment, making the plane a mobile command center. Air Force One is outfitted with a full suite of communications equipment, enabling the President to stay connected even while airborne. Air Force One is also designed with wartime purposes in mind, allowing it to withstand a nuclear attack, and all windows are fortified with armored glass. However, in the event of a nuclear war, disaster, or large-scale conflict that threatens major military and government infrastructure, the United States has the Doomsday Plane. Unlike Air Force One, which prioritizes comfort, the Doomsday Plane is intended to be operational during nuclear war situations and prioritizes safety. Reportedly, only two countries have designed and produced such aircraft, Russia and the United States. With the sophistication of Air Force One comes a hefty price tag. What is it? The high cost of flying Air Force One per hour. It has already been mentioned that it takes a six-figure sum for the presidential aircraft to fly. For example, President Donald Trump in his first month in office already spent around 10 million US dollars on taxes for travel alone. In just four months of moving from one place to another, Donald Trump spent about 17.2 million US dollars. But the principle is that the safety and comfort of the president are the top priorities of Air Force One. Okay, now let's discuss the advanced features and interior of Air Force One. It has a total area of 4,000 square feet, which consists of three floors. The lowest floor is the cargo space for carrying luggage and food supplies on the plane. The main passenger area is located on the second and third floors, also known as the main deck. There are three entrances on the plane, two on the main deck and one on the lower deck. Usually, the president gets on and off at the front, entering the main deck through an air stair, while journalists and other passengers enter through the rear door of the main deck. The front part is nicknamed the White House, consisting of the president's private room. This suite room also includes a bed, sofa, dressing room, and bathroom. Additionally, there's a gym. Behind the suite is the President's office for private conversations with advisors and special guests. There is also a fully equipped medical room necessary for emergency medical care on the plane. The kitchen in Air Force One is larger than that of a commercial jet, capable of accommodating three staff members, a chef and a bartender, with a seating capacity of around 100 people. One of the highlights of Air Force One is its passenger capacity, which can reach up to 102 passengers. The seating arrangement is determined by the hierarchy within the presidential entourage. 
However, it's acknowledged that the current Air Force One is aging and becoming cost efficient to operate. The operating costs now exceed the expense of purchasing a new aircraft. Consequently, the government plans to replace it with the VC-25B, based on the Boeing 747-8. Donald Trump initially opposed this decision due to its high cost, exceeding 3.2 billion US dollars, while the Air Force's budget for the program is only 4 billion US dollars. Nonetheless, the development agreement has been executed with the earliest completion potentially by mid-2025. Notably, there aren't many changes from its predecessor. However, the new aircraft will be much more efficient, offering a wider range and reducing operational costs. Secret features will undoubtedly be added to enhance safety and capabilities not present in the previous model.